under the dark cover of night while millions of Americans sleep. Beatrice Ortiz sits in her car, just feet from all of this chaos, and prays. What time did you get here? Uh, four o'clock in the afternoon yesterday. Yesterday? Yes. She's the first in a long line of vehicles already waiting just outside the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. I read my Bible, uh, reading books, just sitting here, waiting for, you know, to get the food. That way we could be okay. Today, they will hand out free food to 2,000 families. Up to 70% of them, like Beatrice, have never been here before. Thank you, Jesus, for the food bank because there's a lot of people hurting out here. You know, a lot of people. The COVID-19 pandemic has put enormous pressure on families to fulfill the most basic need, putting food on the table. I lost my job in the middle of March. And now it's getting down to the nitty gritty. I never thought it needed help. Hunger knows no bounds. Every food bank is trying to make sure that people in their community don't go hungry. This crisis is now adding to that number of people who are food insecure every day. As unemployment numbers soar past 22 million, many worry supply won't be able to keep up with demand. CEO Eric Cooper has worked in the industry for 25 years. Normally, the food bank would feed about 60,000 people a week. That number jumped to 120,000 people a week. There's a lot of working poor families that are on the edge, and now the COVID-19 crisis has pushed them over that edge. two per family too. You guys will be lanes three and four. You guys will be five and six. At 10 a.m. the distribution gets underway and the first car through. They're already bringing them in. Belongs to Beatrice Ortiz who spent 18 hours in line. Her car is prepped, her trunk empty and before the food a surprise. A $20 gas car and then she is off. Thank you so much. Thank you. At each and every station Beatrice greets and shows gratitude. By the end, her trunk is overflowing. Thank you. And so is her heart. Each family will get one box, and there's probably enough food in this box for about two weeks. Dequarius Branch and Charles Martin are in charge of keeping the food supply flowing. Besides mass distribution, the food bank puts on three drive throughs every week. I would have been one of those people in the car that needed this. And so when I get the chance to choose the product of what they need, it makes me feel amazing. We have to have worries on the front line and we all have fears and worried about ourselves and our family members, but we have to put that aside and just realize that this is bigger than us. Within the conditions we've tested to date, the virus in droplets of saliva survives best in indoors and dry conditions. The virus does not survive as well in droplets of saliva, and that's important because a lot of testing being done is not necessarily being done, number one, with the COVID-19 virus, and number two, in saliva or respiratory fluids. And thirdly, the virus dies the quickest in the presence of direct sunlight under these conditions. And when you, when you look at that chart, look at the aerosol as you breathe it, you put it in a room, 70 to 75 degrees, 20 percent humidity, low humidity. Uh, it lasts half life is about an hour, but you get outside and it cuts down to a minute and a half. Very significant difference uh, when it when it gets hit with UV rays. Mr. President, while there are many unknown links uh, in the COVID-19 transmission chain, we believe these trends can support practical decision making to lower the risks associated with the virus. If I could have my next slide, and when that, while that comes up, you'll see a number of some practical applications. For example, increasing the temperature and humidity of potentially contaminated indoor spaces appears to reduce the stability of the virus. And extra care may be warranted for dry environments that do not have exposure to solar light. 
We're also testing disinfectants, readily available. We've tested bleach, we've tested isopropyl alcohol on the virus, specifically in saliva or in respiratory fluids. And, and I can tell you that bleach will kill the virus in five minutes. Isopropyl alcohol will kill the virus in 30 seconds. And that's with no manipulation, no rubbing, just spraying it on and leaving it go. You rub it and it goes away even faster. We're also looking at other uh, disinfectants, specifically looking at the COVID-19 virus in saliva. So supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light. And I think you said that hasn't been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that, too. Sounds interesting. We'll the right, folks who could. right. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of lungs. So it'd be interesting to check that so that you're going to have to use medical doctors with. But it sounds, it sounds interesting to me. So we'll see. But the whole concept of the light, the way it kills it in one minute, that's, uh, that's pretty powerful. No, I was asking a question sarcastically to reporters like you, just to see what would happen. Now, disinfectant for doing this, maybe on the hands, would work. And I was asking the question of the gentleman who was there yesterday, Bill, because when they say that something will last three or four hours or six hours, but if the sun is out or if they use disinfectant, it goes away in less than a minute. Did you hear about this yesterday? But I was asking a sarcastic and a very sarcastic question to the reporters in the room about disinfectant on the inside. But it does kill it, and it would kill it on the hands, and that would make things much better. That was done in the form of a sarcastic question to the reporters. So you were okay. asking your medical experts to look into it? Uh, no, 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 no. To look into whether or not sun and disinfectant on the hands, but whether or not sun can help us because I mean, he came in yesterday and he said they've done a big study. This is a study. This isn't where he hasn't done it. This is where they've come in with a final report that sun has a massive impact negatively on this fiber. In other words, it does not live well with humidity and it doesn't live well with sun, sunlight, heat. It doesn't live well with heat and sun and disinfectant. And that's what I brought out. And I thought it was clear.